Hello, everybody. This is Pace, as you probably know. And today I'm talking with Jonathan Mead. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Pace. How's it going? Awesome. How are you this morning? I am great. So Jonathan Mead is the mind behind Illuminated Mind. And he is offering a really neat looking program called Trailblazer. And um, he and I are going to talk shop about it because I want to know how you are doing this awesome trailblazer thing. And I want to um, get squeeze all of your secrets out of you so that I can use them to improve my own pathfinding apprenticeship. Nice. <laughs> so tell us about trailblazer. What is it and um, what does it do? It's a secret laboratory. Um, in Argentina, <laughs> where we um, we manufacture robots. No, um, robots. I knew it would be robots. Yeah, yeah. Always with the robots. I don't know what how we get here. Okay, so Trailblazer <laughs> is a six month course that takes you from really kind of not knowing the direction that you want to go to figuring out what you're passionate about and what you can offer others and to create a kind of very concise and very impactful message that you can bring to other people, whether it's in the form of a, of a blog or a book or, you know, some type of platform you can use to serve others and to make a living doing something that you actually care about. Most people, when they send up to Trailblazer, they're doing something they're not incredibly passionate about, or they lost that somewhere along the way, you know, doing a, a business or something, and they found out that, you know, they kind of got off track, and they want to really rekindle that and get very clear on what it is that they have to offer, and to wake up excited about doing that. So that's, that's uh, the message of Trailblazer, and that's what we help people do. And it's a six-month journey, as I said, and the biggest part of it really is the community and, you know, joining forces with other people that are wanting to make this transformation in their own lives as well. Yeah, community is so important. You know, I'm always going yeah. to, uh, to, to be an advocate for connection, <laughs> yep. unsurprisingly. So, so this is the third time that you're offering Trailblazer, right? This is numero... Trace. See. I had to think about that. <laughs> so, so tell me about the first two times. Mm -hmm. how, um, how did it go? How many people signed up? And you've got this, this guarantee, right, that you, within the six-month program, if you, um, if you do all the work, then you'll make $1,000 from your, from your trailblazing. Yep. So, so I want to know how many people actually followed through with that. Yeah. So throughout um, throughout the course, the first time we had about seventy five people sign up, and the second time we had about the same. We had about seventy five people sign up, uh -huh. and each time, um, you know, obviously there's always people that that drop out, and there's always people that sign up for something, and then like they decide that you know, they don't really care enough or they just had a bunch of excitement and then, you know, that kind of dwindles. But for yeah. the people that sign up, what I found is the majority of people, the, the biggest thing that they're looking for is clarity on what exactly it is that they're passionate about and what yeah. exactly it is that they, they um, want to build and want to create a product or an offering around. And <clears throat> for the people that have signed up with, with Trailblazer, I would say at least 50% of the people have figured that out. That's and, nice. And as far as you know, people that have gone on to take that and build something with it and then offer, it with some, you know, offer something and do all the work beyond that, I would say it's probably more in the category of like 10% of the people that have put all those steps into action after, after getting that clarity and made um, at least $1,000. I mean, we've had case studies of people that have made 15 grand and, and four grand and, and nine grand um, 
so it's it's definitely possible with your first product to make much more than that. But um, I found that a lot of people they get stuck with that first initial stage of what am I passionate about and getting clear yeah. on that. So you know, if we were bringing in people that were already at that stage of of having that clarity, I think the number would be probably higher. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a huge kind of milestone that you have to, you know, get to and, and move through um, in order to create the the product and, and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, in my own Pathfinding Apprenticeship, I have some clients who spend the entire six months working with me just to get that clarity. And we don't, yeah. and some, you know, find that in the first month or two and then we move on to create products and things. So I've seen yeah. the same the same sort of breakdown that you've seen with yeah. Trailblazer. Yeah. So of the people who do find that clarity and who do put in the work to create a product out of it, how many of those people actually succeeded at the the thousand dollar goal? Um, for the people that have have gotten the clarity and created a product, I, I think we've had a a very high success rate. I don't know. I mean, here, here's the thing: it's hard to yeah. know exactly what every single person in your course has done um, right. because I've had. I've done courses before where I thought one person had done nothing because they never like showed up on the forums or anything. They logged in a couple of times and then they come back and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, I started a blog and it has 5,000 subscribers and I, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. you know, so it's kind of the hard for surprise. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to gauge um, those people, but for the people that have stayed in contact with us and, you know, we know what they're up to, I would say, like, there's a 90% success rate from, you know, getting that clarity and then launching a product because what I found is really what people struggle with is not, like, doing all the right marketing stuff it's easy to kind of do all of the right marketing things and you know follow a, a, a template and a formula what's really hard to do is get really solid on what your offer is to people and I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about like the message um, the outcome that you help people reach you know who is the active seeker of yeah. that of that outcome and all this other sort of stuff that goes into it so when you do the marketing, you simply have to offer it to others and they get it. And that's, that's the kind of po point where we try to help people reach is, is having that kind of offer where they merely have to present it to other people. Right, right. Because if you can create an offer that's really compelling in and unto itself, and if it's something that you're really passionate about sharing with people, then the marketing is a, a, like a smooth journey instead of this this, you know, right. chaotic struggle. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so that sounds cool. Um, I want to know about the community aspect. So I've had some good experiences and some more challenging experiences trying to build community mm -hmm. when, when I offer a course or an apprenticeship or various other things. Yeah. So what, um, how has that aspect of it gone and what have you done to, to foster community? Well, I think one of the biggest keys with community is having enough of a critical mass of, of people where you, you know, can actually have a statistical significance to know if, if those people will create a community. A lot of times people, they get like, you know, five people or something to sign up and they're like, oh, why is, why are my forums not you know, banging mm -hmm. all the time. And it's probably because you need more people. Um, so having that critical mass, I think, is very important. And then um, for, for us, what we've tried to do is give them a reason to keep coming back and really kind of fostering that and creating a certain type of culture. And here's the reality. I don't think that you can... Um, I don't think you can kind of like force anyone to do things. I mean, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Yeah, yeah. But you can be responsible for creating a certain type of culture. And that's what we try to do is encourage people to um, share their successes with other people, ask for help when they need it, and really 
create a sense that everyone is stronger together than they are apart. So, so how do you do yeah. that? How do you encourage people to, to do that? Um, so when, when they first sign up, um, they get a message about that and they get messages about that throughout the content itself. So they get reminders cool. of that. I think that's really important, not just telling people once, but reminding them that throughout yeah, and totally. having, you know, not to sound like cultish or anything, but like kind of indoctrinating that mm -hmm. type of culture throughout the, the content that you deliver is really important. Um, another thing that we've done is having certain people in the community be kind of ambassadors for everyone else. And you know, offering them some type of like bonus for, for doing that. And it's kind of their role to keep in touch with other people, see how they're doing, like check in with them, see if they're struggling, you know, and, you know, kind of be responsible for fostering um, some of that community and kind of like spreading that, that cultural message that you're trying to share. Nice. Throughout the so, so they're like a forum moderator and a cultural right. ambassador? Yep. Neat. That's a cool idea. Yeah, it, it, it's worked really well for us, and you can you can spot those types of people. I think very yeah. quickly. Yeah, I, I I can think of who they would be. Totally. Yeah. Another thing, another kind of practical thing that we've been doing more is not using um, forums, mm -hmm. but using Yammer instead. And I I don't know if very many people that are listening to this are are familiar with Yammer, or if you're familiar with Yammer Pace, but I know of it. I've okay. been on it a little bit, but I haven't really dug into it. So it's like a social networking tool where you can create like a private social network. Yeah. And it's kind of like Facebook, not quite because you don't have like the in-depth profiles and all that sort of stuff. But the reason I really like it is because it has one column mm -hmm. rather than a forum with like tens of different columns. So the smaller the space is, the more active it's always going to seem. Uh -huh. You know, a restaurant can make their restaurant seem more lively by like closing off one of the <laughs> right one of the back one of room the, one of the yeah. sections, right? Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's that's something that you can do as well. I, so I like Yammer. You can also do that with a forum by just having one forum, one um, area. And another great thing about Yammer is it feels kind of like what people are already using with Facebook and, and Twitter and things like that. So it seems like less of a, a jump than it is to like have this other forum thing that they are always checking. Well, in that case, why not just make a Facebook group? That's, that's what we've experimented with doing and it seems to work okay. You can do, yeah, you can definitely do a Facebook group and I've seen that work really well as well. One thing though that I do like about Yammer is often people will install the the desktop application or the mobile uh, application and mm -hmm. from a content provider um, standpoint or from an entrepreneurial standpoint you have essentially desktop real estate or mobile real estate and you know kind of front of mind um, I guess you know you you've established some type of front of mind um, awareness Right. Whereas on person. Facebook, you're going to have about you know, 80 with a different bunch of things. Things. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So that is one kind of cool, unique thing about Yammer. Anyway, cool. so that's something people can try out. Awesome. So the last thing I want to ask you about is how did you learn to be a trailblazer? You know, how did how did you acquire the skills that you're now? helping other people find their, uh, find their path and yeah. make money with it. Okay, well, there, there, I guess there's kind of two sides of, um, of that equation. The first side really just came naturally to me working with people and kind of getting to the heart of what it is that makes them, them tick and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess because I just kind of grew up with this questioning kind of, mindset and mentality that I always want to get to the root of things or the heart of things. That's who I am. I'm always asking why, you know, why, 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 and until you can't ask that question anymore. Um, and that's, that's kind of what's helped me 
help other people discover their passion is you know coming to them and asking them why well why do you really care about that and oftentimes people get a kind of uncomfortable because uh, they don't have an answer and it forces them to be really honest with themselves mm -hmm. so that's that's part of it for me and that's kind of the just who I am part of it the helping people take that and form it into a business or form it into something <clears throat> they can offer to other people is something yeah. that I've had to learn um, through trial and error myself through um, you know creating my own business and helping right. other people uh, create businesses and I did that with the first product I launched, which was called Reclaim Your Dreams. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of funny because I started out coaching people to help them like find their passion and live on their own terms and not be very focused on on the business side of it. And people just kept, kept coming to me for yeah. help with that stuff. Yeah. And the exact same thing happened to me. I started this this uh, this Pathfinder program that's about, you know, finding your path. I mean, it's almost exactly the same thing as blazing your trail, finding your path, blazing your trail. Yep. And I said on my on my sales page, I said, oh, well, I can help you with any of these things, you know, this or this or this or this or this. And everybody who came wanted help with doing what they love for a living, not just mm -hmm. finding what they want to do, not just an avocation, but a vocation. Right. So yeah, that's like that's just what that's what people want. Yeah, sometimes you have an idea of of what you're going to do at the universe, like has a different idea <laughs> yes. than you do. Yes, and I I was kind of like I jokingly sometimes say that I was forced into this against my own will. Yeah, but no, I mean really, I I found that business and entrepreneurship is one of the biggest vehicles for for personal growth. If you if you choose to make it one. Yeah. And and that's where I get so much joy from and so much satisfaction from is using it as a vehicle for growth and for change um, mm -hmm. and having it be, you know, focused on, on the money and making a livelihood from it, but not have that be kind of the the entire end result. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wholeheartedly yeah. agree. And I would go even further and say that business is a perfect vehicle for not just personal growth and personal change, but changing the world as well, which yeah. is why at the Connection Revolution, we, you know, that the, the teaching business is one of, one of our pillars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. So I think that's everything that I wanted to know. Is there anything else that I'm curious that was about? your chance, you know? Yeah. No, I think you answered all of my questions. Is there anything else that that you wanted that you wanted to say about Trailblazer? You know, um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to say about about Trailblazer? You know, I think we covered pretty much everything. The only thing, other thing I could say is that um, I think this is an important message, and I think that we're kind of just you know, getting to the tip of the iceberg in terms of how, how big this thing is. And um, I just hope that people share this and they, they take it to heart and they are honest with themselves if they do want to make this type of transition to doing something that they, they more care about and they're more excited about that can change the world because I think that's one of the most important things that you can do in your life. Right on. All right. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me, Jonathan. I Absolutely. always love talking to you and I uh, appreciate the chance to get to squeeze some of your little secrets out of you. Absolutely. It's been fun. Likewise. Bye.